Greetings, nerds. I'm Camille Delgado. I'll be graduating this term from Oregon State University with a BS in computer science, and I'm excited to present this short dive into the Cozy Bear Advanced Persistent Threat as my final research project for Defense Against the Dark Arts with Kevin McGrath. Cozy Bear is an advanced persistent threat perpetrated by a group of sophisticated bad actors against multiple targets, including the Pentagon, the U.S. State Department, the White House, and government organizations in South Korea, Germany, Holland, Norway, and Uzbekistan between 2014 and the present day. Today I'll be focusing specifically on its efforts to infiltrate the Democratic National Committee in 2015 and 2016 to gain intelligence around Democratic strategy relating to the 2016 U.S. presidential campaign. Cozy Bear should be understood to be distinct from Fancy Bear, another advanced threat believed to be perpetrated by the same nation state at the same time against the same target. According to CrowdStrike, who were first employed by the DNC to investigate the breach, quote, we have identified no collaboration between the two actors or even an awareness of one by the other. Instead, we observe the two Russian espionage groups compromise the same systems and engage separately in the theft of identical credentials. While you would virtually never see Western intelligence agencies going after the same target without deconfliction for fear of compromising each other's operations, in Russia, this is not an uncommon scenario, end quote. So, this is Cozy Bear. Cozy Bear targets victims on both a broad and directed basis. Cozy Bear attempts to hide itself at every level of its penetration by using social engineering, encoding, encryption, fake or stolen credentials and domains, steganography, file offsets, naming conventions, and more. It also perpetuates itself in multiple ways by running from within memory, communicating with command and control centers, and responding to individual threats to its survival within a system. It exploits both Windows and Linux environments by having a Python compilable backdoor option. It uses known malware sets like Cobalt Strike and various Duke iterations, as well as using a proprietary system of relaying commands in plain sight over Twitter. It evolves specifically in response to any new threat to its persistence. So in short, Cozy Bear is an adversary that was and is not to be underestimated. Cozy Bear had been active in various other forms since its earliest 2014, but it was first used to target the DNC in summer 2015 in a broad phishing campaign that targeted over 1,000 individuals. Due to its intricacy and persistence methods, Cozy Bear had a surprisingly long lifespan within the DNC networks as far as malware goes, penetrating and opening backdoors for almost a full calendar year before the DNC actually responded by enlisting the services of CrowdStrike. The threat was noted by the FBI fairly early on through Dutch intelligence services having infiltrated Cozy Bear, but the person answering the calls of the FBI at the DNC allegedly thought it was just a prank call. By the summer of 2016, news of the Cozy Bear DNC hack broke in the Washington Post and it appeared to be earlier than the actor had wanted it to be revealed. In response, a previously unknown entity named Guccifer 2.0 created an online persona and social media presence in order to take credit for the hack. Through subsequent interviews with journalists, it became clear that they were patently uninformed about the nature of the hack, its complexity, and even basic malware concepts. Russia is suspected of having hastily created this identity and cover story in order to piggyback on the alleged single bad actor that was the original Guccifer. Let's get into the details of the life cycle of the attack. The payload gains its initial foothold in the system by unencrypting and running PowerShell commands that dump a further payload. This payload then sets up direct command and control with the bad actor, which runs through a hard-coded server and or a convoluted Twitter relay scheme. Payloads are all encrypted and hidden within seemingly benign image files, so let's get into it. Step 0. Motivation and Target Identification The initial step Cozy Bear or any threat must take in order to be effective is to identify a target or targets that will help achieve its ends, whatever they may be. In the case of Cozy Bear, its motives in regards to the DNC hack appear to have been disruption of U.S. elections, disinformation of both the American and global populations, and general intelligence gathering. They wanted to get as wide and deep as they could into networks that would provide the juiciest information. In hindsight, 
we have seen that even though they were identified and halted within a year of their first efforts, the damage has been significant and long-lasting to democracy in both the U.S. and abroad. The widespread effects of this and other Russian efforts are somewhat beyond the scope of this analysis, but plenty of ink has been spilled about it for almost three years now. Step 1. Fishing Campaign in summer 2015, Cozy Bear conducted a broad campaign targeting over 1,000 targets, including U.S. government officials. This in itself is an unusual approach for a nation-state operation, which more commonly targets specific, high-value individual targets. The broadness of the campaign differentiates it from Fancy Bear, which did use the targeted approach. Cozy Bear succeeded by having infiltrated legitimate U.S. organizations and educational institutions in order to be able to send emails from their trusted domains. The email links were successfully followed because, according to Kaspersky, they purported to be article PDFs of highly relevant and well-crafted content. In one case, an article about the possibility of Ukraine joining NATO was shared. Cozy Bear was built on a long-known advanced persistent threat called Cozy Dukes, which starts its life cycle by phishing in a similar way. However, Cozy Dukes is most notable for being used by passing around a zip file presenting itself as a viral video of a Super Bowl commercial featuring office chimps. While this is an easy and effective way to spread malware quickly among cubicle workers at any level, Cozy Bear's more refined and targeted fish ultimately hooked government and party officials' attention, allowing it to succeed at infiltrating DNC servers at the highest levels of access. Step 2. Initial Payload Download The link file runs the initial PowerShell script, which contains another obfuscated Base64 encoded PowerShell script. Decoding this Base64 script reveals references to a few offsets. First of all, it contains calls to a function that presents the PDF the user thought they were downloading. This PDF is also in the link file at a later offset and is XOR encrypted. The decoded script also contains a function with offsets to another file to be extracted. Following those offsets reveals an XOR encoded file which, when decoded, is named cyzfc.dat. The dropper copies the system file rundll32.exe to the install location of the malware, then uses this copy of rundll32 to load and execute its main component. This access to the run command gives Cozy Bear virtually unlimited power. Step 3. Full Payload Download cyzfc.dat is called using run. It creates read-write space for itself in memory, extracts the second stage payload as a resource, and assembles that and its headers at given offsets. The payload is then decoded using rolling XOR. This second stage is an instance of Cobalt Strike, a full-featured malware testing suite which performs the following operations. Creation of a named pipe, connection to said named pipe with global data size of 261,362 bytes, implementation of a backdoor over the named pipe, read of 261,362 bytes into an allocated buffer, write of the third stage payload onto read-write memory by de-XORing every four bytes, change of written region to be readable and executable, and running of the executable of this third stage payload in a new thread. According to Microsoft, quote, Cobalt Strike is a feature-rich penetration testing tool that provides remote attackers with a wide range of capabilities, including escalating privileges, capturing user input, executing arbitrary commands through PowerShell or Windows management instrumentation, performing reconnaissance, communicating with command and control servers over various protocols, and downloading and installing additional malware. Cobalt Strike essentially allows anything to be done to a computer once it's installed, from key logging to finding out system and version information to browser pivoting and spear phishing. The floodgates are now open. Step 4. Hazard of the Dukes As I mentioned earlier, Cozy Bear was built on a malware platform known by the postfix Duke, which has been mutated over the years to target different systems and evade changing security measures while leaving open a persistent backdoor in their infected targets. The new dukes utilized by Cozy Bear go by the names Sea Duke and Hammer Duke. 
Sea Duke is revolutionary as the first Duke to be cross-platform, having been written in Python 2 and therefore compilable on both Windows and Linux. This is the first sign of what we will see is a pattern of customizing the actions of the malware for any possible hardware scenario, security level, or other factor. It is indicative of a highly skilled, motivated, and well-funded set of actors versus a more boilerplate piece of software that might simply quit if confronted with an incompatible environment. Another feature of this particular flavor of malware is its persistence. Cozy Bear is known to have anti-detection capabilities to spot certain anti-malware programs and systems that may hinder it, and it even tailors its security scans based on the geographic location of its target. The Windows-targeted Duke collects system information and then invokes a Windows Management Instrumentation instance in the Root Security Center namespace to identify security products to evade by selecting all from antivirus product and firewall product. It also searches for security products from the vendors Crystal, Kaspersky, Sophos, Dr. Webb, Avira, and Komodo Dragon. The malware maintains persistence by staying stored in the Windows Management Instrumentation System, allowing this adversary to launch malicious code automatically after a specified period of system uptime or on a specific schedule. In addition to the WMI use, it also hunts through the software Microsoft Windows current version uninstall registry key, looking for security products to avoid. Once these checks are run, the program sets up an encrypted connection to a command and control center at the domain pandorasong.com to fetch additional PowerShell commands. The ability to run these commands gives almost limitless ability to the actors using them. For instance, it is known that they were able to run Mimikatz from the command line in order to steal credentials and therefore move laterally within a now vulnerable system. Step 5. Timing Hammerduke, also known as Hammer Toss, is a simple backdoor toolset used by Cozy Bear sometimes as a backup backdoor once they have their initial foothold in case their primary means were discovered. It is another example of the extreme lengths Cozy Bear goes, in order, goes to in order to maintain persistence and keep open lines of communication to command and control. It has two means of communication with, the, with CNC. One is a hard-coded server called Uploader, which visits a URL and downloads an image with a specific file size. The other, more compelling means of communication starts an algorithm that produces a different Twitter handle every day. If a threat has been registered for that day, a method called tDiscoverer goes to the Twitter page indicated by that handle where there's a single tweet with the URL of an image file and a minimum file size. The image looks normal, but contains hidden encrypted commands to be executed in memory, which are appended after the image's end of file marker. Cozy Bear uses Internet Explorer application com object to visit the URL and download the image. If a threat has not been registered for that day, the program tries again the next day with a newly generated handle ad infinitum. In further regards to timing, it is telling to note that these contacts with command and control seem to correspond to Russian working hours, Moscow being eight hours ahead of Washington, D.C., and that operations seem to cease around major Russian holidays. Step six, evolution and adaptation. This method of communication with command and control ensures Cozy Bear's long-term security and unprecedented opportunities for access. The encrypted data in a downloaded image may include instructions to execute commands via PowerShell, execute a direct command or file, or save an executable to disk and execute it. In several cases, the commands directed the program to upload information from target networks to accounts on cloud storage services using login credentials received in earlier on in the malware lifecycle. There's also evidence of more passive commands having been executed, like using the backdoor to perform reconnaissance on the victim network by obtaining a list of running tasks and uploading it to a specific account on a cloud storage service. Cozy Bear's layers upon layers of complexity are truly mind-boggling. Even if all network traffic was being monitored and flagged, a visit here or there to Twitter and an HTTP request for an image would hardly be cause for alarm. 
If the image downloads were intercepted and inspected, depending on the encryption scheme, the malicious data would be worthless to investigators without its key. Additionally, the target always seems to have a specific human agent or agency on the other end of its connection, individualizing and responding to any threat or challenge that may present itself to impede their information gathering strategy. The level of time and resources devoted by the attackers is yet another indicator of involvement by a nation state or other powerful entity. Isn't all this effort reminiscent of classic Soviet spy techniques like of coded messages, secret rendezvous, and targeted information gathering? Step 7 and beyond. Since Cozy Bear's first use, more threats have emerged directly descended from its methods. For instance, Cloud Duke works almost identically, but channels communications over Microsoft OneDrive versus Twitter. Cozy Bear itself is back to spear phishing as of late 2018, now targeting dozens of organizations in government, military, defense contracting, media, and other industries. Upon the conclusion of the Mueller investigation earlier this year, Special Counsel, Counsel Robert Mueller indicted 12 Russians for their role in the 2016 U.S. election interference as a direct result of the malware Cozy Bear and Fancy Bear. Additionally, CrowdStrike, who initially addressed the threat, has found itself at the center of a debunked but still very much alive conspiracy theory that they planted data on the DNC servers about then-candidate Trump's collusion with Russia. While not solely responsible for the level of disinformation and division in the U.S. right now, Cozy Bear's fruits have definitely added fuel to that fire. Cozy Bear is a prime example of the real and lasting damage that can be perpetrated by a dedicated group of bad actors. I hope you enjoyed this report on the motivations, methods, and implications behind APT29 as much as I enjoyed researching it. Thanks for watching, and go Beavs! I used a number of resources in my research, including white page reports by CrowdStrike, Kaspersky, MITRE, F-Secure, and FireEye. I also got overviews of the threats from Microsoft's analysis of the threat lifecycle and the joint assessment report published by the FBI and DHS in 2016. Other analyses by independent security experts filled in the gaps of how exactly Cozy Bear used its various files and encryption schemes.